In the last video, we optimistically set about trying to repair and put back together my RS6, which has been dismantled for nearly four weeks. I created a really detailed plan with all of the jobs I was going to work through. We started to replace the components and put the PCV unit back in place, despite encountering a couple of problems. my life. I then proceeded to refit the radiator pack, the crash bar, the headlights, and finally the front bumper, all with the purpose of pressure testing the system and refilling the coolant. It was then we realised we had a couple of coolant leaks, but not just any coolant leak, a coolant leak from the thermostat housing, and one that can only be fixed by taking the whole front end of the car apart again, undoing all of the work we just spent the whole day doing, and also meaning we had to order more parts, which meant more delays in getting this car put back together and driving. So it's a new day, we've had new parts delivered overnight from eBay. I've had a moment to myself after realising I'm going to have to take the whole front end of the car apart again. <laughs> but I've slept well and we're ready to tackle this and finally get this on and get this car started. So I'm going to go ahead and strip the whole front end of the car again. When it's all stripped, I'll bring it down, I'll show you what this new part looks like and how we fit it. Come on. So earlier on the video we did the rust treatment to here and it's all dried and cured now and you can see it looks loads better. It's done its job and it's converted that rust into, well, non-rustable metal now, if that's a technical term, but it looks loads better and it's the same at the other side. But you might have noticed there's a silver shiny thing here now. Yes, guys, that is the rusty pipe. So what I decided to do after doing that rust treatment is I dug out that pipe that was in the scrap box and I thought, let me just have another, another little look at that. So what I ended up doing is taking it outside and giving it a good scrape with his wire brush and then I also took this wire drill bit to it as well got rid of all of that loose rust and then I took some pliers and I just gave it a stress test and just nipped it really hard in certain places just to see if it was still structurally solid and surprisingly it was so I decided after doing that rust treatment just to stick a little bit of that rust converter on and then give it a fresh a fresh paint job and now the OEM rusty pipe is back it's not the prettiest looking, but at least now it's back with the original OEM part. There's no tie wraps there. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that. So I should have really done that in the first place rather than jumping to get to a, an alternative cheap solution. But uh, you live and learn. But there you go, guys. So if you have a rusty pipe, consider rust converting it and then just painting it and, and reusing it. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get this car stripped. All right, guys. So we're back at the well-known position now at the front end of the RS6, stripped apart. So I'm getting quite good at this now because this is like the third time I've, I've had this back apart so I can do it pretty quick now. I know all the tips and tricks. So let me bring you down and I'll show you this thermostat housing that we're going to replace. So here we are once again with the whole front end dismantled, stripped open and taken apart. So we've had to do that in order to get back to this thing here which is the thermostat housing. So the leak I was getting was coming from just under here from the middle there running along and dripping and dripping down there and previously that was soaking the whole of the car the whole of the car was soaking wet underneath over a period of time when it was left sitting so I did try turning the gasket round bolting it back on but I was still getting the same leak so rather than buying a five pound gasket putting it all back together again and still having the same leak I've decided just to take the hit and pay 110 120 pounds on eBay for a new a new one of these thermostat housings so we're going to take this one off I'll take it to the bench, I'll show you them both, and then we'll get this one new one fitted. So to remove it, there's just five screws. We've got one, two, three, four, and a fifth one just under here somewhere, other side of here. So we'll take those out, the T30 torxes, we'll take them out, and then this whole thing will just pop off. I will have to take this coolant hose off and the coolant hose there that I did replace the Jubilee clip for in the last video, which is where I thought the leak was coming from originally. So we'll take these two hoses off, take the five T30 torxes out, and then we'll take it to the bench and we'll have a look at it. Right, let's crack on. guys that's screw number five so this rear pipe that's connected to it I found the easiest way to take that off is just to leave it connected loosen the clip and then when you've undone the screws you can just give it a little bit of a wiggle and it should slide right off maybe get a screwdriver as well just to give it a little a little help a little help in hand oh. 
Oh yeah, and don't forget there's two sensors connected to this, which I did forget. So make sure you don't rip those out. One at the bottom of the thermostat housing and one next to this connector. All right, there we go. Let's take us to the bench. Right guys, so here we are back at the bench. This is the thermostat housing that I've just taken off. It was leaking from this bottom bit here, just between these two screws. I did take the O-ring seal out and turn it around just to see if that would help. It didn't, but probably to be expected. If I put a new O-ring on, it might do the job and it might be a nice cheap five pound, six pound fix, but there's also the risk that I put a new O-ring on, bought it all back together and it still leaks. So like I said earlier, I've just taken the hit and I bought this new replacement one overnight from eBay. It's not branded by Audi, but I'm pretty sure it's the same manufacturer. Um, in fact, on there you can see the actual Audi part number is not on, whereas on there it is. So I'm pretty sure it's the same manufacturer. Don't throw this out with this bit on. I'm going to need this bit. So this bit comes off with a little clip. We'll pull that out. We'll pop this off and that will go on there. So let's change these parts over, get this one fixed, and then I'll show you it once it's in place. So there's a couple of lines on this, so it only goes in one way. So. That way. <laughs> Pop that in. Quite tight. Which is a good thing. Once it's in, you just pop that clip down and it shouldn't come off. Yeah, that's in. Right, what I have noticed though, is when I got this out of the box, there's a little bit of a rattle to it, which made me concerned, but I've took the old one off and there's a rattle to that one as well. So whatever that rattle is, it's normal. Right, let's get this on the car. So same process before, we're gonna slot that pipe on in reverse order first, then we'll line that up and then we've got these five T30 Torx screws that will go just around the outside. So let's do this. I am going to put just a tiny bit of silicon grease on that there to help slide that into that pipe a little bit easier and just rub a little bit around that O-ring seal. Hopefully it'll help. It probably won't do much, but I'll take anything I can get this at this point. Just making sure to connect the rear sensor first because that's hard to get to once this is back in place. She slides in easier than she pulls out. Nice. Just gonna give the maintenance surface of this a little wipe with a plastic scraper and a cloth just to get any crusted, crystallized coolant off to make sure there's no little kinks or nicks in that seal when we make them up flush. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna give it a little kiss. Please don't leak. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier guys, but I did actually check my paperwork and about nine months ago, this leak on this very unit was fixed by an Audi dealership. Whether they changed the whole unit, I don't know, or whether they just changed the O-ring. Either way, it didn't fix the leak. But fortunately, in Dad's garage labor, it's fairly cheap. Lacking somewhat in expertise though. Okay, so that's those five screws hand tight, just nip down. Don't forget to reconnect this sensor here back to there. And there's also that sensor there that needs to be connected. So don't forget those. What I'm gonna do now, connect those coolant pipes back together, get the front end on again, and then I'll meet you back at the top when we have another go at vacuum testing the system. I'll see you in a minute. Right guys, so I've just done another pressure test again. I put a little bit of coolant in and I pumped this up to 12 PSI and I'm checking for leaks basically. What I'm not getting now that I had before was like, like the sound of air bubbling. You know when your tummy rumbles? Well, that's the sound that I was getting from around that thermostat housing and that's, there's no sound at all now, which is really, really good. It's been on for about five, 10 minutes and it's still holding that 12 PSI. I'm checking under the car and there's no leaks, there's no drips from that thermostat housing. So I'm gonna give it a few more minutes then I'll give it a vacuum test just to make sure 
And once we're happy with that, we'll then put the fresh coolant in. Um, but while that's holding its vacuum, I'm gonna start putting the front end of the car back together, get the headlights back on, get all the sensors plugged in, and then we should be hopefully ready to do a proper coolant refill. So, let's crack on. Right guys, so we're finally back together. I've put the front end back on, headlights on, crash bar in, I've reconnected all the sensors and all the coolant hoses. We're now ready to pull a vacuum on this system and feed in the new coolant. So, let's give this a go. So first thing I'm gonna do is just connect this vacuum filler tool to the coolant reservoir. I then need to connect my compressor to the top of here, switch it on and let it pull a vacuum and I'll show you the gauge as it's pulling the vacuum. Let's crack on. Right guys, so I've now pulled a vacuum to just over 50 on this meter. So this is, uh, I'm not quite sure what the measurement is, it's inch HG, I don't know. Anyway, so we've pulled it to the, just past the green, which is what they say there in the manual. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fill this 10 liter bucket with this Evo 12 coolant, G12 coolant, because it's gonna need more than five liters and there's only five liters at a time. And what I don't wanna do is mess around and risk that hose coming out and sucking in air as we're, as we're filling the coolant system. So I'm gonna pour 10 liters into this bucket. We'll turn the vacuum pipe on, we'll let it feed in, and we'll keep an eye on that bucket and we can always top some more up if need be. Right, so that's 10 liters in the bucket. The vacuum's on, it's holding vacuum. All I need to do now is just turn this lever and it's gonna suck the coolant up this pipe and into the system and when the vacuum is completely gone the whole system should be full of coolant and then there's a couple of little things we have to do after that which I'll show you in a second. All right, let's give this a go. See the coolant's just sucking up this pipe now, filling in through the system. The vacuum needle's just bobbing a little bit. Show you that guys as it's sucking there. Cool it in when that goes all the way down to zero, the system should be full and free of air. In theory. Okay, that's about five litres that's just gone in now, another five to go. We'll keep an eye on it. If it drops too low, we'll be on standby just to top that bucket up with a bit more coolant. Still sucking. Right guys, that's pretty much at zero now. It stopped audibly, audibly? It stopped audibly pulling through coolant, so I'm gonna turn this off. And then I'm gonna disconnect this pipe from here. The coolant reservoir is pretty much halfway full now, so I'll disconnect this pipe. There we go. And then we can take this nipple off and fill up this coolant reservoir to the max and then I'll tell you what we're gonna do next inside the car. So I'll check back with you in a second. Right guys, so I've put the bumper back on and I've just plugged in the sensor because what I don't wanna do is start the ignition and any of these sensors be unplugged, especially for the parking sensors and stuff like that, because I believe, my understanding is, if you turn the ignition on when these things are undone, they need, sometimes they need recalibrating at the dealer, so I don't want to do that. So the coolant's filled up as high as it'll go. There is an Audi 2, which I don't have, which is like a little funnel that sticks in here and allows you to fill the coolant past the top of the reservoir. That basically provides a bit of pressure on the fluid when you're trying to drain that heater matrix pipe. I haven't got that tool and I've, not, I've looked around and I haven't really got anything I can improvise. So what I've done is I've just loosened the coolant reservoir and I've lifted it up as high as it'll go and moved the sensor just above the bracket and got it rested there. So it's a little bit higher. What we need to do now is reconnect the battery, go inside the car, turn the ignition on, but not start the engine. We need to turn the heater up to full, but the fans down to the low setting and then leave that running for maybe like a minute or two. And what that's supposed to do is just bleed the air through the, the heater matrix at the front of the car 
And then once that's done, we're gonna to have to disconnect the battery again because there's a lot of wires here that you can't get to the pipe without disconnecting. So I have to disconnect the battery again, disconnect these two wires, move that wiring harness out of the way, and then hopefully slide this little pipe back and we should have a clean little squirt of water, uh, coolant. And then that means that system's bled there. And then finally we come back to the front and we just undo this little nipple. And then hopefully if that bleeds clear fluid, the whole system's bled, we can drain the excess out of there and get it back to the max line. So when the engine's cold, the coolant should be at max. Then we fire the car up and there's a couple of little procedures we do whilst the engine's running. So let's give this a go. That's the battery connected. I heard the fuel pump go on various other bits and the handbrake go on, so a little bit nervous. This has not been started up for four weeks now since I've been messing around with it. So let's go in, turn the ignition on and turn the heater on full and the fans down to low. So we're not pressing the brake pedal guys. We're literally just turning the ignition on. Okay, there we go. Heat on max, AC off. Right, and we'll leave that to do its thing. Oh, it feels weird to be in there with the lights on. I hope I haven't buggered it up. Okay, so I can hear the fan doing its thing in there. Just keeping an eye on this current level. I might put a tiny bit more in now. Right guys, that's been a couple of minutes now. I'm gonna disconnect the battery and then I'll bring you out the front and we'll see what comes out of that top heater matrix pipe. Right guys, so the battery's disconnected. What I need to do now is just undo these two wires at this side that I can move this harness over and we'll see if we can get any coolant out of this pipe. I don't technically know if you need to do this step on the RS6. I know you need to do it on the S6. It does say in the manual to do it, but it doesn't specify exactly if you don't need to do it for the S6, uh, the RS6. You'd think it'd be easy to get to if you did have to do it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I have seen this step done on the V6 supercharged ones, so I can only assume you have to do it here, but they didn't have this wiring harness in the way. I'd rather do it and not have to do it than not do it and need to do it. The tricky part is actually getting to it. Okay, so we're right over the front of the car. We need to move this out the way. So we'll pull this back over here. And then there's this wiring harness here with a bracket that we took off earlier. That needs to kind of move out the way as well. So it's this pipe here we need to get to that clip and just slide it off a little bit. So I'll position the camera here and see, hopefully you'll be able to see the water come out, if there is any. Hopefully you guys can see this now. I'm just gonna pull it back a tiny bit and see if we get some coolant out. Definitely want this whole pipe to come off. They're coming out. It's good. All right guys, there is coolant coming out there and a little bit of air came out, so that's good. I don't think I'll do any more to that. I don't wanna risk pulling that pipe off. So let's put that clip back on and get this wiring connected back. Right, so we're just at the front here. This is the bleed nipple for the heat exchange. So I'm gonna loosen this. If there's air in it, it should come out and it should eventually bleed through to liquid. If it's already bled the system, then liquid should just come out. So let's give this a go. All right, that uh, screwdriver's gonna round that off, so I don't wanna use that. Oh. Try it with a set of pliers, because it's not liking those torxes. Oh. All right, there we go, guys. It was gonna round it with a screwdriver, so i will just use some pliers to twist it round, see what comes out. It's bubbling there. See that bubbling, guys? That's some air coming out, I believe. My current's dropping on there a little bit, so I'm just gonna top a little bit more current up at the back end. Only a tiny bit, though. It's like bleeding a radiator, this in the house. I think it's just bleeding clear fluid now. All right, guys, the current system's bled as best as I think I can get it. I've reconnected the battery, I've put the front bumper on again, connected everything, all the sensors are plugged in, all the pipes are connected. I'm gonna go in now and start it hopefully for the first time. I have a feeling the battery's gonna be flat and it's not gonna fire up, but we'll give it a go. Wish me luck. 
need the key. Alright guys, so the car's still on the ramp. Turn the ignition on. Okay, up. Here we go. She's alive! Alright, let's go and check out the front. Get these doors open. Well, she sounds good. Sounds good. Right, guys, so I'm just going through the coolant procedure where you get in now, you start the engine up, and you run it for a couple of minutes at three and a half thousand rpm and then you let it sit for a bit and then you run at two thousand rpm and you can actually see the coolant levels dropped in some of the bubbles are starting to come out there so i've got another couple of minutes running this at around about two thousand rpm then we'll let the system completely cool down and then we'll top up the levels one final time and while it's cooling down i want to get the bumper back on get that strut race back on and then hopefully everything will back together nice and i can take it for a spin i think waiting for this for ages and the garage is obviously full of carbon monoxide but the doors are open and it's raining classic British weather right next time you see her she'll be ready to drive get back in a bit right guys I've just turned the engine off and the fans have kicked in so that's a good sign that means I've done something right right guys so the first thing I want to do is pop back on the strut brace there's five M10 splines to go on they're all talked down to 20 newton meters, so all the same, let's get this on quickly. All right, next up, air filter back on. that one in. Next, bumper. And the sun's coming out. Lovely. I'm just going to carefully manhandle this bumper up, get these two screws at the top lined up, and then I'll go back and clip the sides in. So try and do this hopefully without scratching the bumper or scratching the wings, and that's why I put that tape there at the very start of this series, to avoid just that. Okay, so I'm just going to pop these two screws in now, and I can go and line the sides up. Right guys, so we're back down by the car now. As I mentioned earlier, there's three bolts, one, two, and a third one just at the back there. These are what you tighten down to clamp this bumper in place. Before you do that, you just need to loosen them off and get this lined in and slid under the headlight. So we'll negotiate this into place and then we'll hopefully get it tacked in and then we can do the same on the other side. There we go, that's popped in place there guys now. I'm just going to carefully pop in the other side and then I'll come back and we'll start to get this aligned and tighten it down. I just wanted to make sure the headlights are all lined up as well first before we commit and send it home. But that's looking good. Feels great to get the bumper back on. I'm just going to show you where these bolts are and how you get to them with your 10mm ratchet and extension. So let me show you here quickly. Alright guys, so once the bumper's clipped back on and lined up, you just need to give this a little pull forward, as you can see, just need to pull them forward. And then what you've got under here is three bolts. So you've got one straight up here, 12, 10 mil. You've then got one right at the back, straight up there, 10 mil. And then you've got one just here, 10 mil. And then once you've done that, you've got two screws, one here at the top, which just pushes the bumper up, 
and that one there that just keeps it nipped to the front of that bracket. So let's get these ones in and then we're almost ready to put the wheels back on. Nice. So I'm going to do the one at the front first, closer to here, just to make sure that this bumper's completely nipped up flush. So I can pull it forward like this while I'm doing it. Right, that's nipped down. And then I'll do probably the front one and then the middle one last. And in fact, the middle one doesn't have a nut on here, so either I've lost it or it didn't have one when I took it off. I can't remember. Anyway, let's do these two screws next. So we've got the slightly longer one that goes straight up there and then the slightly smaller one that goes straight there. Last one, straight forward. Nice. Right. Wheel arch linings. But not forget, first of all, to reconnect your washer, bottle, for your wipers. Otherwise, you'll have to take everything back off again. And that's just a push fit. Easy. So when you're putting this guard back on, don't forget to reconnect your condensation pipe off your headlights. There's a couple of clips it just clips to. Right, now I've got about 20 T25 torques to just send all the way around this arch lining. So I'll get to that now. Right guys, the wheel's on, the boot's finally closed, she's back on the ground. The final thing I have to do is just top up this coolant level. So part of the, the coolant refill procedure is, you fire it up, you run it at a certain RPM for a period of time, you make sure the coolant doesn't drop too far, top it up, let it completely cool down, and then when it's fully cooled, top the coolant back up to max, and then you should be good to go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna top this coolant up, I'm gonna go and get changed, get clean, and then I'm gonna take her out for a little spin, just to see if everything is a-okay. Hopefully it is, and I'll let you know how I get on. So guys, I've just got back from a 300 mile road trip back to the northeast, and actually it's been a couple of weeks now since I left you at the last part of that video, and in that time I've done nearly a thousand miles. And I have to say, the car has run brilliantly. I've had no oil leaks, no coolant leaks, the fans have been kicking on when they should be, and I've even had a chance to give it a nice clean, so it's starting to look all shiny, ready for our spring slash summer-ish weather. If you like this video, don't forget to like, hit the subscribe button, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.